So in today's project, we're going to make this end look like this end. It's important to do is to keep your tools nice and sharp. So again, here's the uh, plan plans for the cabin, and the piece we're working on today is this bottom sillboard. Keep your pencil nice and sharp. These fat carpenter pencils are actually not ideal for layout for timber framing because they're they're so the the lead so wide. Guys that are really good at this, unlike myself, are use uh, exacto knives. here is the finished cut after using the skill saw. Those are my layout lines. I'm well inside there um, and I don't have to worry about over cutting. I'll hand tool those and hand finish those. It's, relative, it's relatively a small amount of material to remove. I can remove it quickly with my chisel but uh, it saves me a lot of trouble. It gives me a nice clean edge to work with and uh, it, it's just fine. It's a good way to go. Well, that can save a ton of time uh, with these mortises is uh, a good corded drill. Cordless drills, you've seen me use them, they have their place, but they don't really have a place in uh, heavy timber framing. They're just not durable enough and the batteries don't run long. But the very best you can get, if you can find one of these Milwaukee Magnum hole shooters at a garage sale, uh, this here is uh, the very best. They're really powerful. They'll break your arm, they're so strong. And get yourself a good bit. It's hard to find quality bits uh, anymore. These, the ones that they sell at Home Depot are pretty light duty and not very good. And I try to find the stuff that was made uh, in the 50s and 60s, and you can usually find that on eBay. I got two of these brand new uh, American built Milwaukee inch and a half bits, still with the uh, rubber on them. And look at the, just look at the heft and the, and the quality of that. And that's just uh, top, top notch. That's a tool a bit that can be resharpened by hand and will last you a lifetime. It's uh, and, and how cool is the box too? <laughs> it was nice to get the boxes with them, but it's uh, hard to find tools made like this anymore. Got our skill saw, our six cuts for all our mortises, and we can uh, put our drill to work. So the, we have two inch mortises, so the inch and a half bit's just perfect. If I were to use a two inch bit, I'd run the risk of going too far either way. So this gives me uh, a little bit of wiggle room. But I'll come back from my line a little bit and center this and make sure I'm drilling straight up and down. I can remove a lot of material quickly here. See right there saves me a ton of work. Now I'm only chiseling a small amount of this corner instead of working the whole thing out. Now the fun part. Now when I'm chiseling, I'm always going to stay. This is where the, it's nice to have the two-inch chisel just for this initial cut. I'm going to stay inside my line. My line is actually where I ultimately want to be, but I will uh, trim trim that later. So make sure your chisel's up and down and make your first cut just like that. Take care with these first few chisel strokes and this is where I, I like working with the inch and a half. This is where uh, you want to really take your time and just start working this corner. You don't want any tear out on the top of this so take your time here then you can get a little bit rougher with it once you get uh, this first bit of material out. So work that corner and then uh, seat your chisel again. Make sure your chisels up and down, very pl uh, plumb, and stay right in that cut, and then work this out. This is definitely where I take my time. You know, obviously none of this is going to show, it's going to be under the, under the decking, but uh, it's a good place to start because it teaches you to uh, you can make your mistakes on this on these pieces that won't show so when you're doing your finish on the top uh, you uh, have the experience to do better work okay we're just about past the the danger area for the we're at a high risk of having tear out Okay, looks pretty good. Now I've seen a lot of guys take and they'll drill this whole thing out 
and I think that's a waste of time because once you have this worked down for a while you can just simply come here and move large slabs easily. The top mortise is complete. We can flip this over to the side and go to work on the sides.